Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. In today's video, I am talking Excel, specifically how to analyze data. This is targeted towards accountants, finance analysts, and then potentially even auditors, particularly if you're not used to using large sets of data and you want to review information. So I'm going to talk about how you can analyze data in the most effective way, translating data from a list of information into pivot tables and graphs, and basically show you best practice on how to do that. So hopefully it'll be useful. Um, if you're new to my channel, I have made other Excels. I've made about like a five part course, and I'm gonna continue making these and potentially make an Excel video every Saturday, let's say, um, just depending on my availability. So that's what I'm going to do in today's video. Hopefully it's useful, entertaining. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. So we're in Excel. Here you see a large set of data. It's a typical set of data that you would get if you work for a company or if you're trying to analyze numbers uh, generally as like an auditor or as an accountant. So you'll have things like the year, the month, the quarter, the product you're reviewing, the color of the product, let's say. It's just any old subcategory of the product type. The units, price, and the revenue generated. So revenue is just the units times by the price. Now, obviously here you have a large set of data, uh, subcategories, so chairs are broken down into black, brown, gray, and then you have tables, desks. So a large set of data there. Obviously you can't just review that data in list format. You need to break it down and potentially just try and generate a graph. Graphs are always the best way of being able to review information, particularly because um, it's just a visual approach and most people work very visually. Some people like tables, but that's what we'll start with, and that's by creating a pivot table. So, first of all, select the entire set of data. So in order to create a pivot table, insert, pivot table, new workbook, OK, drags across. So here we are, you have your initial pivot table. And what we're effectively trying to do is break it down into a month format. So usually when you're reviewing data, you want to see how it trends over a set period of time. So you want to bring in the months, into the columns, you wanna bring in uh, the unit, revenue, price, and you can see how it's dragged it over into column format, we want it into rows. Now, although there is the price there, that price doesn't really mean anything on a category basis, because it's adding up a load of prices. Really what you wanna see is the average price, and we'll call it yield. So take the price out, and the way you create this is by going, you can basically press shift command plus and oh, I think that would be shift control plus on a PC and that brings up this field box. Now this is very useful because you can type in something like yield and you can basically then create the formula off the back of other values that you already have in the table. So you want to bring in the revenue insert field and you want to divide that by the units press OK, and there all of a sudden you're going to have the yield. Now that yield is going to be representative of everything you sold in January, and it's a more representative figure of the price, isn't it? Because price, if you add it up, doesn't mean anything, but as you basically want the average, which is what we've just shown there. Now what you want to do is bring in the years, so we bring in the years into the rows, and there we have your set of data. But obviously you want to have filters here as well because that's just a summary of all the data. The best way of doing this in a more presentable format, instead of just clicking on filters here and bring it into that box, no, is actually go to pivot table analysis and then insert slicer. And then you select the product color, okay. Then you have these nice boxes here which are a little bit more presentable than just using a little drag down box. So that's good. So the next step is you want to create graphs. This is a good step in terms of seeing how the data looks, but really you still can't really analyze the data. I mean, you could bring the values up here so they're next to each other, which is a little bit nicer. Also, you want to change, I always change the pivot table options to um, classic pivot table, because then it represents it like this, which is just a nicer format. And you can see here, uh, how they compare and it's it's good, but it's not it's not great So what you want to actually do is change this into a graphical format now your instinct is to obviously 
uh, just create a graph off the back of the table by clicking sort of insert recommended charts. But it doesn't really work with a pivot table, particularly when you have a lot of data. So the way you want to do it is by creating a subsection of data in a table below that derives off this pivot. So uh, one thing I just realized I need to bring in actually is, uh, is um, the quarters as well, just to make the data look nicer. So we bring the quarters up here. Uh, and then you want to remove subtotals, grand totals, because they don't mean anything really. So, okay, so there we are. So there you have your set of data. So you want to create a table off the back of this. So the first thing we're going to show is how the progression of the yield and the units sold change over a two year span. So the way we're going to do that is create the template. So we're going to have two years of this. We're going to say 2019, 2020 like this. And we're going to bring in units and we're going to bring in yield. Okay, and then you just want to drag across the figures like this. Now you could put in a formula that picks up from the pivot table, but um, but sometimes you just got to think which one's going to be an easier way of doing it or a quicker way. And given this, such a small amount of data, it's not worth doing any SUMIF formulas or VLOOKUPs. Another thing you've got to realize is I'm able to click onto the actual pivot table itself and it not create a problem. And the reason I, uh, what I mean by that is usually when you drag across, it creates a problem because it just picks up one value. But the way you change that is by clicking on the pivot table, going on pivot table analysis, click on that little arrow that says options and ticking off the generate get pivot data. Because as soon as you tick off that, you can use the pivot data as if it's any other um, cell within Excel and doesn't create a problem like usual. So then you want to drag across the 2020 on yield. And now basically what you want to do is create the graph. So you create the graph C off the back of a separate table, not one that's on the pivot table. So the way you create the graph is you drag across all the data, you click insert recommended graphs, and then select either one of these. What, what you can see has happened which you may not have realized, is if you start each subcategory by just having the 2019, say, at the first bar, what it does is it subcategorizes the entire set of data. And the same with the quarters. So you see start the quarters on the first month of each quarter, and it creates these subsections within the graph, which is nice. Then what you want to do is obviously click on this, and you want to change chart type, combo, have it like this, and you want to then double click on the line because the line represents yield and you want that on a secondary axis. And all of a sudden you have a graph there, which is real nice, that starts to show you how the data is looking. Next, you want to create the second table. So the second table is just going to show you the revenue across January to December. So it's not going to show you it in a long line going from 2019 to 2020. It's going to show you January to December and how they compare uh, on each year. So the next thing you want to do is create another table by quite simply going like this, copying the data from the revenue, and then 2019, so that's fine. And then you want to select as a formula the revenue section like this. And now simply what you do is select this data, insert, recommended charts, line graph, title this. The reason I title this one revenue is that you don't have any, uh, you know, it doesn't say units or yield on the other one. And there you have two graphical tables there that give you a much better idea of what's going on with the data. Now, obviously this looks a bit clunky the way that all this data is set out. So obviously you want to space it out. And what you do is just cut, which is basically command X and put the data somewhere else to the right where no one will see it like this. And then take the other set of data, uh, control X and then paste that control V over here. And there you basically have two graphs with the data that give you a lot better idea of what's going on. 
Now, obviously, because we have these slices, you can click through this like chair and it changes then the tables and the graphs, which give you a lot easier way of analyzing the data. And that's probably the best way that you can do it. Or you can cancel those and just see what, you know, what the brown products look like, you know, because you might go, well, hang on, the brown products aren't selling as well as the black products, for instance. And that would be a lot, you know, that's the kind of analysis that you're able to break down or the gray products aren't selling as well. So if you actually look, for instance, um, just in terms of reviewing the information, you have about five millions worth of sales because you check out the revenue. It's all very much, much of a muchness. You could probably say that September's looking quite good in 2019, for instance, and you can break out certain sections. But then if you click through the items, so for instance, chairs, you can see that chairs provide 2 million approximately of the 5 million revenue. Desks provide a similar level, 2 million, which means that the tables you can analyze and say, okay, well, the table's providing less revenue. Then you can go back and go, well, the chairs are providing uh, as much revenue as the desks, but then actually when you look at the tonnages, we're actually selling about uh, 200,000 units overall, and 1,400 of those units are coming from the chairs, for instance, and the desks, you can see that we're only selling 5,000 units. So that would mean the 5,000 units that you're selling, you're selling at a much higher unit price. And that's the sort of analysis you want to do, and that's how you break down a large set of data into graphs. The best way I can think of doing it, best practice, uh, it just is a lot nicer to be able to review information that way. That's it. Hopefully you found that useful, informative. If you did like that video, subscribe to my channel, more Excels to come. Hopefully post them on Saturdays, maybe every other Saturday, see how it goes, see what kind of views I get on this video. Hopefully you found that useful. Bye-bye.